Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to the video. Welcome to my garage. In this video, we're going to uh, physically wire in a couple of sensors back on the engine to the ECU. And then we're going to go into the ECU, make sure that the ECU is seeing the information from the sensors. And then we're going to make sure that it's relaying that information and displaying it properly on the digital dash. So recently I fabricated the intake manifold for Ratchet here and he has the drive-by-wire throttle body in here which I have already wired but I'll show you that in the ECU because that is actually all connected up and operating and then I also installed the map sensor and the inlet air temperature sensor and now I want to run the wire to these connect them to the ECU and I want to see that they're working so I'm a little bit ahead of the game already because I have the grounds and the power already run for these I ran those while I was going through the trouble of running all this for the drive-by wire but I still need to run the sensor wires for both of these and I need to run it down through here and actually pin it to the connector that's giving it the information for the ECU so to start this what I've done is I've got this is my temperature sensor and I've made myself just a little bit of a wiring schematic as to what I need to do there's two wires that go to the temperature sensor it's basically just a resistor I think and what I'm what I'm gonna have is I've got this wire which is coming from pin 39 on the ECU and I believe this is just uh, a regulated like probably 5 volts that's going into the sensor this sensor is going to be a resistor and then this just goes back to the sensor ground which is basically just a ground and I think what's gonna happen is as the resistance changes on this the ECU will read that probably in current through this wire. I'm not 100% sure, but either way, I know I need to run from 39 to the sensor and then the other wire I need to connect to one of the grounds that I've already run. And then on the map sensor, this has three wires and it has a ground, same kind of ground that the other sensor has. It has five volts, a regulated five volt coming from the ECU. And then it's gonna have a sig signal going back to the ECU and that is going to be on pin number 52. Okay so here I am at the ECU and I've run my two signal wires here one is white one is yellow the only reason for the colors is just so that when I get back by the sensors I can tell which is which the colors aside from that they don't matter I know I need to be into terminals 39 and 52 so I'm going to disconnect the plug here Give me a little bit of freedom there. I'm also going to take off some of this Velcro so that I can spread the wires out a little more. So with this plug, what they've done is all of these gray pieces are just fillers that you put into the hole when you don't have a wire going in there. And now that I'm just at the point where I'm adding and adding and adding wires, before I put a wire in there, I have to pull that plug out. So I'm going to be going into 39 and 52. This is an 80, 80 pin plug, which means it starts down here. So this is 1 through 20, 21 through 40, 41 through 60, 61 through 80. So this is 2, 4, 6, 8. And what did I say? One of them is 39, which means that if that is 40, then that one right there is 39 so you don't have to do any releasing to take these blanks out you just grab a hold of them and then just wiggle it back and forth a little bit all right and so that's just a little a little plug that pulls out of there so I took that out of 39 and now I need to find 52 and I know that this is 2, 4, 60, 59, 58, 57, 56, 55, 54, 53, 52. So 52 is right above that yellow wire. So I'm going to grab that. And again, just twist it and pull it out of there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my terminals on these two wires right here. Now this is 20 gauge wire and it's it's actual automotive wire and I'm going to trim back just a little bit here 
with my automatic strippers. So I've got the terminals here. I will put a link in the description for these terminals. I've You've seen me use these before when I was working on the GM ECU for Mahler. It's actually the same terminals. I always uh, crease them in a little bit. I just find it a lot easier to get it started. Uh, these crimpers are the one of the best tools I've ever bought in my life. I'll put a link in the description for that. So I'm going to put it in here. Make sure the wire's where I want it to be. And then crimp down. Probably not be able to see this, but the bottom part crimps, crimps onto the insulation just for strength, and then the top part actually crimps the terminal. Now we need to, to prepare the plug for us to actually put the wires in there. I used to be so afraid of these plugs, but I've worked with them so much, they're actually quite simple. So we want to push the wires in there. First thing you need to do is you need to put this connector into what they call a release mode. And to do that, you need to pop up this, this blue piece and you just take a, a small little screwdriver and there's, there's slots on either end and you just put the screwdriver in there and just pry it up a little bit. Just go a little bit on each side you'll kind of hear it pop up. If you go too far, it pops off, which is not the end of the world. You can put it back on. But now it's popped up. It's in like a release mode. And so I've got my two wires here. And uh, let's see, what needs to go to what? Um, number 39 is the air temperature sensor. And I'm saying I want that one to be white. All right, so I've got white wire and pin number 39. They only go in one way. And I don't know if you guys heard that or not, but you'll actually you'll actually hear it click as, as once you go past the little plastic tab and then you can you can wiggle it a little bit. So you can just you can tell that it's grabbed a hold of it. All right, so that's white on 39. And now I need to do the yellow one. All right, so I've got the yellow wire here and this goes into 52 and again I just heard it click and I can feel the slop in there now once you've got the two wires in there then you just take this cap and push it down and then then you're locked in there now these are locked in I'm going to plug that back in and uh, now I'm just going to take these and I'm just going to snug everything back up and I'm going to pull the slack through all the way back by the engine. Okay now we're back here at the engine and I have my five wires coming back here right now. I've got the yellow and the white here we just ran. These are coming from the ECU. The two blacks are what they call signal grounds. They're basically just clean grounds for the sensors. And then the red is regulated 5 volts coming from the ECU for the MAP sensor. So I'm going to start with the IAT, the incoming air temperature, because that's the easy one. And I like low hanging fruit. So that is a two pin connector and the polarity does not matter. So I don't really have to pay attention to much. And the air temperature is white and one of the blacks. So I'm going to grab a white and a black. I'm going to pull everything else out of the way here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this up the harness for the drive-by wire so that the wires are the roughly the same length. I'm going to go to here and then I'm going to figure I'll have, you know, uh, you always want a little bit of slack and that's where I'm going to cut it. Boom. Okay, now we're committed. Okay, so I've got the two terminals here that came with the connector. Um, there's no seals or anything that I have to push 
past the wires. So what I'm going to do, just like I was doing the ECU, I'm going to strip the wires. Again, just to make it a little bit easier, I like to just draw them in a little bit. I don't know why, that just makes it easier to get it started in the crimper. Okay, that's where I want it. I've got the crimper. Now I'm just going to feed these Just like on the ECU plug, you feed these through until you hear them click. And then you can feel a little tiny bit of slop and then of course if you look in there you can see that they, they're both at the same height and all that. And then uh, these plugs just have this little little piece that you feed in there and it just puts pressure on the tabs that release them. So now that is ready to go. So I'm going to plug it in. All right. Now I've got the plug for the map sensor and this is a bit more complex. There's three wires here instead of two and they are polarity sensitive, but I printed out the wiring schematic for that map sensor and it tells me right here what each of the pins are for. So, you know, you just have to take your time and make sure that when you terminate this, you land them all the same. So this video is pretty long, so what I'm probably gonna do is just land all these, but I'll do it under a time lapse. Okay, so now we've got the sensors in there. We've got the wires hooked up to them. Everything's hooked up. I've turned the battery power on to the ECU and I've turned the ignition on. So the ECU is actually up and running. I've got the Infinity Tuner software pulled up. I'm going to plug in the USB here and as soon as I do, Infinity Tuner should identify it. There we go. And now we are up and running. So let's see what we've got here. Right away, if we go to the map, we've got negative 2.9, and if we go to the air temp, it's saying 80. So we've definitely got some different readings than we did before, but let's, uh, let's double check a couple things here. So we're going to the wizard, I'm going to setup wizard, and basic sensors, and let's double click on the air temperature sensor. And uh, this is definitely getting some information because before this was just reading infinite. Let's double check the sensor. It says AEM, eighth inch, NPT. That's the actual sensor that I have in there, so that's lucky. But if we scroll down here, there's a bunch of other sensors that you could choose from. Just so happens that mine is the default AEM. So you click on that, it's got all of the, the settings in there. It probably automatically loads it. So that's good, so we're good on that. My guess would be this 26.87 is in Celsius. Alexa. What is 26.8 degrees Celsius converted to Fahrenheit? 26.8 degrees Celsius is 80.24 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so it's reading it in Celsius and then I've told it I want it in Fahrenheit, so it's just converting it. All right, so we're good there. So let's check the map sensor. And we've got the AEM one bar. Hey, what do you know? Again, that's the, that's the actual sensor I put in there, but if you, Pull down that menu, there's there's the other AEM map sensors that they have, and then there's all sorts of other sensors. Again, if you clicked on the sensor that you have, it would just load all of the defaults in there and you'd be good to go. It says the raw information is 3.59, that's volts. 
it's operating on a 0.5 to 4.5 voltage range. So it's coming in at 3.59 and that's telling it that it's 79 or 80. I'm not sure what, um, that might be bar, probably bar, but I'm not sure. Um, however, either way, it's definitely reading something and it looks pretty accurate. So I think we're good with that. So let's get out of there, get out of the wizard. So if we look here, our air temp is 80. We're good with that, that's working. And our map PSI is negative 2.9. I'll have to look into what that is exactly, but just off the top of my head, I would say that that map is, or whatever the conversion is, it's being used that sea level is zero, because here I'm at 6,200 feet. If it was thinking that zero feet is sea level, which would be 14.7, but if it was using that as zero, if you go up in elevation, which I am, let me do a quick Google search here. Looks like absolute atmospheric pressure at 6,000 feet, which is close to where I am, is 11.8. And if absolute at sea level would be 14.7. Alexa, what is 14.7 minus 11.8? 14.7 minus 11.8 is 2.9. 2.9, okay, and it's reading negative 2.9, so it's, I'll have to change that because I don't think I want it to read that way, but either way, it's assuming that sea level is zero, and since I'm at a higher elevation, it's saying that I'm at negative 2.9. So whatever, whatever it's reading that in, it's accurate. I just need to figure out what conversion it's doing there and change it. Um, but either way, that's good. Both of those sensors are reading now. That's, that's awesome. Then if we come in here and look at Ratchet, he is reading, 79 degrees, so that's good. That's the um, intake temp. And then it's reading 80. I think I can tell this to read whatever I want, but either way, right now it's reading 80, which is the same thing that the ECU is reading, so that's good. I just need to figure out what it's converting that to. And then if you look over here, I've got the throttle, throttle stuff. I told you guys I installed the drive-by wire. So here's my drive-by wire. This is out of a, an LS3 type setup. Um, I've got the drive-by wire pedal right here. Got the pedals, the wires coming out of there. And then if you look back there, you can see the throttle body. I already showed you the wires to those, but when I hit the pedal, it opens, which is so cool. It's like instantaneous. You can see the throttle position, the throttle position, and then it throws you the the throttle body. So it's cool. All right, so that's it for this video, guys. I wanted to do a video with some of the wiring stuff, um, just showing how I've been doing the wiring, because I've been doing it kind of in between videos here and there, just adding more and more. The next thing I'm going to do, I think, are the ignition coils and the injectors. So I'll be running a bunch of wiring for that. So I'll have to see what this video looks like because there's actually a lot of video to it and I don't want it to be super duper long. So I'll see what I can do to edit it down but still keep it interesting just to give people an, an idea of how much wiring actually in, is involved when you're doing something like this from scratch. But if you're not in a hurry or a rush or anything, it's actually pretty fun because as you get the sensors and then you look up where you need to land them and then you find out what kind of sensor it is and how it operates it's like a it's like a learning procedure that you have to learn because you're doing it which is fun I mean that's why I'm doing it this way so thanks for watching the video guys I hope it's helping you with whatever you're working on or just giving you something to watch and I hope to see you on the next video take care